Now Son, this is his chance to shine. We paid big money for you, Son. Respond with the goal. There you go. Hyung Min Son is the new king. This is his chance. Leon Bailey, 1v1, has to score this. Goes for goal. Let's go. 79th minute once again. I'm sure we scored at this exact moment in the last game as well. So here we are back again for another episode of the Bayer Leverkusen career mode series. This is episode number 10. Last episode was probably the biggest episode of the series because we completed the financial takeover and we managed to sign Hyung Min Son for an obscene amount of money but this is a transfer that I'm sure is going to be worth it. We're still in the transfer window, it's the deadline day and we're still on the hunt for potential players. Maybe not for this season because we don't have the funds but definitely for next season. Pre-contract deals could be made in this one. Of course, we've got some Bundesliga games in this episode as we try and maintain our spot in the top four. In fact, we've got a big game against Borussia Dortmund, which is going to be massive. And if all that wasn't enough, we're going to be revealing the team we'll be up against in the Champions League round of 16, which I'm really excited for. I'm not sure if we're going to play the game in this episode or not. We'll see. But yeah, we've got a lot going on in today's episode. Transfer deadline day madness, Bundesliga, Champions League, and all that sort of stuff so keep the support coming in drop a like in the video subscribe if you're new around here as always 3000 likes will be the goal let's see if we can achieve that anyways let's get the episode underway time for a press conference and if you guys want to see your questions being answered drop them down in the comment section below first one of the day you should give bender more chances he's the club captain and when you played him against dusseldorf he performed quite well First of all, this Bender, which is Sven Bender, he's not actually the club captain. The club captain was Lars Bender and we sold him in the transfer window and that's why we don't really need to play him as Spurs because right now our captain is Kai Havertz. And yeah, Bender was good in that game against Dusseldorf but we've got so many better defenders like Keherer, Jonathan Ta, Tapsoba and of course Zakaria who we use a lot in that position. So I'm not too convinced on, you know, playing Bender more because he's aging as well. So for now, we'll use him as backup and that's the way I'm going to continue with. Next question, why don't you sell Arankis while he's still worth a decent punt of money? Good shout once again, but then again, we don't really have time to sell Arangiz right now. We've just got 10 hours left on transfer deadline day and the last thing I want is selling him and not having enough time to bring in another player. So for now, we're going to keep Arangis. He's done a good job so far for me. I know he's aging. I know he's not the fastest of players, but he puts in a good shift in midfield. So I'm happy to keep him. But next season, he might be a player we look to replace. But for now, we keep him. Next question. Do you think that Bayer Leverkusen can make their way to the league title with the current position, as well as some big games left? Ooh, that's a good one. Especially with the signing of Jungmann Son. A lot of you guys are expecting me to, you know, Make the push forward towards the Bundesliga title. I feel like this season it'll be incredibly difficult because we've just got 15 games left and Bayern Munich have like a 10 point advantage over us and that's going to be incredibly difficult to overcome. In 19 games so far, Bayern have just lost one game and drawn another. It's just unrealistic to expect us to win the league title this season. We'll continue to push forward but I think finishing top 4 has to be my goal for this season. And next season, we're going to try and push for the Bundesliga. For now, the goal is to just finish as high as possible in the Bundesliga and also do well in the Champions League. That is the press conference wrapped up for the day. Let's move on. We signed Jung Min Son for about 90 million in the last episode from Spurs. He's back at Bayer Leverkusen where he made a name for himself and he's already on the score sheet for us. He scored on his return against Paderborn and that's why you guys voted for him as your player of the episode. Okay, so in this transfer window so far, we've done some fantastic fantastic business yeah not gonna lie the financial takeover really helped us out but signing Hyung Min Son was a statement and also signing Atal has been just tremendous both of them two quality players that are gonna be here for a long time but we've still got some money left and a lot of you guys were telling me to invest this money in a pre-contract deal which is what we're gonna do trying to get a top player for free that'll help us out next season and honestly when I saw that Luka Modric was available for free I just cannot look past him he just seems like the perfect transfer to give us that extra composure, the experience in that midfield, giving us that winning mentality in midfield. Because I think he would complement Palacios or even Gwendozi really well. And not just that, he's a Ballon d'Or winner, man. Having someone like him in our team could be clutch. And that too for free. I know he's not going to be playing every game for us next season because of his age. His stamina is going to be low as well as overall my dip. But it's Luka Modric, man. Come on. If we can sign him for free, I genuinely want to do it. I know we'll only have him next season. But to sign Luka Modric for free just seems 
absolutely incredible. We're going to have to pay him a lot of money on wages, but ultimately, no transfer fee involved, so it'll still be very cheap. You know what, guys? We're going to go for it. I'm going to negotiate with Luka Modric and his agent. I want to sign him for next season. We may not even have to sign Tony Cruz and spend all that money on him because I think Luka Modric could do as good as a job as him. And again, I'm saying this, he won't be playing a lot next season for us. I mean, he'll play a lot, but not every single game. But I think he could still offer us a tremendous amount of quality in that midfield, especially if we want to become a team that wins the Bundesliga. Signing players like him is key. So I'm going to offer him a crucial squad role. Contract lengthwise, let's, let's go a couple of years. I think that's fair. I think he will accept that. Yes, indeed, that works for him. That's good to see. No release clause absolutely works with me as well. And now this is where things get interesting. To be fair, he's not asking for much in wages. Just 180,000. That works. Let's remove the goal bonus, which, by the way, I don't think he's going to score 20 goals a season. So it wouldn't... It would be okay to put that in. But anyways, let's just submit offer. 180,000, 1.2 million in signing bonus. Let's see if a Ballon d'Or winner is willing to join Bayer Leverkusen. 195. Okay, I can, I can work with that. Let's accept it. And that should be done. And yes, it is. We've signed Luka Modric for next season. A Ballon d'Or winner is going to be joining by Leverkusen. The amount of experience and quality he's going to add to our side is going to be tremendous. He might be the replacement we need for Arangiz in that midfield. Speaking about Arangiz, we just get a mammoth offer for him from AC Milan. But there just isn't enough time to negotiate with Milan, get him sold and to bring in a replacement. Luka Modric will only be joining next season, so... It just doesn't make sense to sell Arangiz at this point. And with that, the transfer deadline day has come to an end. The transfer window has been shut. It's been one hell of a window for us. I mean, the improvements we've made, it's actually crazy. Signing Hyung Min Son. Yes, I know the financial takeover helped us out massively. But then signing Atal as well. The team is looking ready for the rest of the season. Okay, we could maybe get some business sorted for the start of next season as we get an offer for Sven Bender outside the trans window from Benfica. I don't mind negotiating this. In fact, you know what? I'm going to accept it. 14.4 million seems like a very good amount for him. If we can get him sold before the start of next season, that just seems perfect. Added money for us to bring in maybe another younger defender. Quick look at our season objectives before we get back into Bundesliga action. Hoping for more goals and assists from Kai Havertz. Clean sheets as well in the Bundesliga would be lovely. We're actually very close to wrapping up the 3-4-3 challenge, so I'm hoping we can get that done. Okay, we're done with all the transfer madness. Time to get back to focusing on the German league, the Bundesliga. We're in fourth position right now, but we can't slip up at all. We're only a couple of points clear of Hoffenheim. Three above Wolfsburg. Our next game is actually against Hoffenheim. So if we lose this game, we'll actually drop down to fifth. So we can't afford that to happen. We're playing away as well. So it's going to be a tough game. This is how we've got our team set up for this one. Yusuf Atal, King Kai Havertz, Son, all starting. Palacios as well ahead of Arangiz. Jonathan Taz, Zakaria at the back. It's going to be a difficult game against Hoffenheim. And that's why I've gone for pretty much my strongest 11. Could be an early chance for us in this one. Here's Leon Bailey. Good dribbling from him. Looks to get the shot off. Struggles to do so. This is going to be a challenging fixture. Because Hoffenheim are the kind of team I always tend to, you know, struggle against. Because they seem to be playing very attacking football. And take their chances well as well. So we've got to be careful. Hoffenheim playing some good football. It's Campania now. They're spreading the play out wide. This is causing us problems. Rideki with a very good save. As I said, Hoffenheim, we cannot underestimate them. They're a good team. For some reason, Hyung Min Son is wearing number 16 on his back. I don't know why, because I remember changing it to number 7. Um, EA, what's, what's that about? Anyways, after this game, we'll make it number 7. Some step overs there. Now it's Khedira on the ball. Oh, that's a fantastic back heel. Shots taken. Thankfully wide. Hoffenheim bombing forwards down the left flank. They're looking to create something here. I'm not, I'm not a fan of this. Zakaria with a good block there. So far in this game, we've done nothing. It's legit been all Hoffenheim. Cross comes in. It's a good one. Diaby doing some defensive work. Not good enough as it falls to Rudy. Good challenge there from Demirbe. Kai Havertz, can he help us out? No, he can't. Back to Rudy. Chance for them here. Jonathan Targets gets it away somehow. But as I said, it's been all Hoffenheim. We've got to improve, man. We're getting opened up so easily in this game. It's a chance for them now. Big save from Rudecki. He has no right to make that save there. Incredible goalkeeping. I've noticed this from Hideki recently, at least, well, in the last few weeks or so for us. He's been making way too many insane saves and keeping us alive in games. Let's hope he can keep this form up. It's been a tragic first half for us. We've barely done anything. Second half, 
We need an improvement. Kadira on the attack looks for the pass inwards. They're playing good football now. Shots taken. Redeki again coming up clutch. He's kept us alive in this game. We have no right to be equal with Hoffenheim in this one. Redeki is saving us. Cross comes in. It's a good one again. Chance for them. Rudy, what's happening here? Blocks after blocks. And Redeki makes another save and we somehow don't concede. I am so confused here. What happened right here? Let's take a look. Hideki made another outrageous save. And then on the rebound, I think Kehrer made a big block. Unbelievable scenes. I really think we need something different up top. Leon Bailey just isn't cutting it. So let's bring on Alexander Isaac. I think I want some extra legs in midfield as well. So we'll bring on Gwendozi for Demirbe. I think that's about it for now. Let's hope this works. Oh, I'm not liking this. I'm not a fan of this. Another chance for our opponents. They've completely opened us up. Fair enough. I can't complain at all. Kedira with a simple finish. A deserved goal for Hoffenheim. They've been the better team. I just cannot compete with them in this one away from home. It's been a really tricky outing. We've been second to everything. And well, it goes to show that we're 1-0 down now because of it. We can respond though. I can feel it. I think we can respond. We just need to be better in the final third. Looks for Isaac. Finds Son again. Now it's Kai Havertz. This could lead to something. Kai Havertz on the left foot. Should be a simple goal. Let's go. King Kai Havertz with the equalizer in the 87th minute. I think Hyungman Son picked up the assist for this one. 1-1 one, one against Hoffenheim. And this goal is huge because with this, we stay above Hoffenheim in the Bundesliga rankings. Brilliant football once again on the counter-attack. Kai Havertz just easily gets it onto his left foot. Sends the defender the wrong way. And then bang. There's the perfect finish. 1-1. One, one. Is there enough time for a winner? Probably not, but we'll see. Last thing I want is conceding now. That would genuinely be heartbreaking, but probably deserved because they have been the better team. I'm going to be honest. And they get a chance to score. Ridecki has been the hero of this match for us. 100% man of the match. The amount of saves he's made. It's actually crazy. This is probably the first time in this series where I'm content with the draw because that's how bad we were. We somehow sneaked away with a 1-1 one, one draw because... We had no right to, you know, get anything out of this game. Hoffenheim were better than us in pretty much every possible stat. And we somehow got away with the draw. I'll take it though. Not gonna complain. Lucky to get a draw, weren't you? You know what? Luck is a part of the game. And in that game, luck was in our favor for once. Good to see Demir be happy with all the first team action he's been getting. I'm just gonna say I'm proud of you. We've got another message and, well, Leverkusen board seem to be really happy with the work we're doing, which is great to see. Well, looks like the media have got this one right. Redeki's heroics in goal helped by Leverkusen hold Hoffenheim to a draw. We've got the quarterfinals of the German Cup, which we are going to simulate with our second team and we still get the result. Isaac scores, Demirbe as well. Havertz comes on and scores as well. 3-0, we're on to the semi-finals. Somehow, a German second division team have made their way to the semi-finals of the DFB Pokal. That's interesting. It looks like we're going to have a finals between Leverkusen and Bayern Munich, which is going to be one hell of a game. Could be an opportunity for us to win our first trophy of the series. We've now got some big decisions to make. So, so far in this series, we've been playing a lot of players out of position, like Heung-Min Son, basically as a striker, which is one of his natural positions in real life. But on FIFA, he's only got the left mid and center forward role. Similar for Leon Bailey as well, he's only got the left mid and right mid role. Yet, we've been playing him as a striker for pretty much the entirety of this series. So, using the cheat engine, should I change their position to strikers to keep it realistic? Because... By now, that should become their natural position, especially for Leon Bailey and even Heung-Min Son for that matter. So, do you guys want me to change their positions to striker through the cheat engine? Let me know in the comments section. We could do the same thing for Weiser as well. Make him a proper right mid, I suppose. I don't know. Let me know in the comments section if you guys want me to do that. So, we're a point below Hoffenheim right now in the Bundesliga, but we do have a game in hand over them. Unfortunately for us, that game in hand is against Borussia Dortmund, so I'm not too sure what to expect from that one. The game against Hoffenheim was a nightmare. Dortmund's probably going to be even harder. Let's hope we can get a good result from this. Here we go. Time for another incredibly difficult game in the Bundesliga as we take on Borussia Dortmund at the Bay Arena in front of our own fans. I want to get a win here. It'll be a big statement to all the other Bundesliga teams. We've got Heung-Min Son, Leon Bailey, Kai Havertz all starting. Arangi is back in the lineup. A few fitness concerns, especially for Demir, but you know what? In that case, let's actually play Palacios instead of him because I do trust in Palacios. So this is how we've got our team lined up. Leverkusen versus Dortmund. All the big players are starting. Let's go out there and put in a good performance and hopefully walk away with all three points. That's the Dortmund team we're facing. And oh my God, is that an incredible team. They've got Insigne, Royce, Sancho, Hakimi down the right side. A player a lot of you guys have wanted me to sign. Of course, 
Erling Braut Haaland up top, a midfield of Witzel Brandt. I mean, they're literally starting every attacker possible. What's going on here? A good defense with Akanji and Hummels as well. That Dortmund team is no joke. I know I've said this many times, but I absolutely hate playing in snowy conditions. And a big game like this against Dortmund in these conditions, I'm not a fan of it. Oh no, we're already getting ripped apart. Sancho takes a shot, but thankfully he went for the shot from like outside the box instead of like taking it inwards. And we, of course, avoid conceding. Sancho gets an early booking as well. I don't know for what. Here we go inside now. Palacios does well. Brilliantly done. Finds Yusef Atal. Getting a chance to bomb forward. Goes for goal. Yusef Atal with his first goal in a Leverkusen shirt on a big game like this against Borussia Dortmund. Palacios completely opened up their defense here with that one pass and the dribble past the defender. And then Atal with one of the best finishes you'll see all season. Put his foot through it and well, it was 100% a goal because Berkey was not saving that. Look at the power behind that shot. What a finish from Atal and that's why we've brought him on. He's going to offer us this from that right flank pretty much every single time we play him in. No chance for Berkey. 1-0 up against Dortmund at the Bay Arena. Come on. Dortmund have a free kick in a very good position. I think it's Marco Royce to take it. He goes for it. Hits the post. On the rebound chance for them. Hideki with an insane save. And Haaland hits the side netting. How did we not concede from that attack? Julian Brandt. Sancho goes for goal. Radecki with another save. That was, again, a good attack from Dortmund. They're pushing forward now. They know they've got to try and score soon. So we've just got to be alert. But that means on the counter, we'll have more space to work with. And we've got to make it count. Here goes Atal once again down the wings. Royce isn't catching him. Still Atal could go for the cutback. Good pass inwards. But uh, they get it away. Short corner for Dortmund. Lorenzo Insigne. He's been a menace to defend against because of his small stature. Good ball comes in. We've just allowed Sancho to score a header against us. Come on, man. What kind of defending is this? Hideki has been so good all episode long and he doesn't come for this ball and we concede. Oh, this game. Why can't I score headers like this? I just don't get it. Like, just look at this. How is Sancho scoring a header from there? Why is any of my defenders not marking him? I just, I, I, I don't get it. This shouldn't be happening. What a stupid way to concede. Halftime against Dortmund. I'm really gutted because we should be in the lead in this one. We scored such a beautiful goal. Palacios assisting Atal. But in the end, we just conceded like, uh, I don't even want to describe that goal that Sancho scored. But we're looking good. Second half, hopefully things will go our way. Palacios sees Diaby. Look at the space Diaby has got to run into. We might be able to hit them on the counter-attack here. Still Diaby. Simple cut back to Kai Havertz. Should do something from here. Still Kai Havertz can't get the shot off, man. We've just wasted a beautiful attack. Here goes Diaby on the attack. He's getting chased though. Still Diaby is broken through. This is our chance now. Diaby looks back for Heung-Min Son. Has to be a goal. How's he getting blocked there? But Son again. This time with his left foot. This is what you get when you've got someone with a five-star weak foot. He tried to score with his right. Shot got blocked. But he was able to quickly get it onto his left. And fired at home. Left footed finesse shot. And we get the lead against Borussia Dortmund. A deserved lead as well. And once again, I forgot to give him his number seven kit back. We'll do that after this game. But a lovely finish from Son. We've got the advantage now. Let's not blow this up. Oh, that is a dangerous cross that comes in and thankfully this time Sancho does not score from a header if Sancho is out here scoring like a couple of headers against us I don't even want to talk about this game anymore thankfully this time he missed so we walk away with a big win over Borussia Dortmund 2-1 this win's going to give us a lot of confidence in the Bundesliga I mean beating Borussia Dortmund one of the top two teams in the league is definitely a confidence booster just goes to show we're going on the right path yeah, Jung Min Son coming up clutch, Atal as well coming up clutch, good to see. Well, looks like the deal for Sven Bender has broken down, Benfica don't want to sign him anymore. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Our next game in the Bundesliga is against Union Berlin away from home. We sim this one with our second team and we still get a 4-0 win. Son, Isaac, Diaby, Arangiz all scoring. Perfect. So with a couple of wins in the Bundesliga, we still keep our top four spot intact. Now just three points behind Borussia Dortmund, four behind RB Leipzig. We've also closed the gap down between us and first place Bayern Munich down to nine points. That is still a lot of points. It's going to be difficult even attempting to challenge Bayern this season. They've been that much better than everyone else. But we do have a one-point gap over Wolfsburg and I think five points over Hoffenheim. So we're doing pretty well in the Bundesliga. Our focus now though is on the Champions League and it's now time to find out who we'll be up against in the round of 16 of this competition. We somehow managed to qualify for it, knocking out Atletico Madrid in the process. We finished second in the group and the team we'll be facing is none other than Valencia. I will take that. 
We could have gotten Liverpool, Real Madrid or many of the other top teams, but Valencia, I think I fancy my chances against them. This is going to be interesting. We're going to be playing the first leg in today's episode as well. Looking at the other draws, City, Real Madrid, Bayern, Ajax, Liverpool, Atalanta, Inter, PSG, Lyon, Juve, Spurs, Benfica and Napoli, Barca. Interesting. I think with us having Heung-Min Son, players like Kai Havertz, Zakaria, Jonathan Tah, you've got to classify us as the favourites for this time. But we cannot underestimate Valencia. We know they're a good team. They always do well in La Liga, at least for the most part. So they're going to give us a good fight here. Getting a good result in the first leg is going to be key because going to the Mestalla for the second leg is going to be a real challenge. Heung-Min Son starts this game. Leon Bailey, Kai Havertz basically going for... Pretty much what I consider to be my strongest 11, not taking any chances at all. We've got Jonathan Tah, Zakaria all starting. I'm ready for this. Let's go out there and deliver on a big Champions League night. So Valencia using a 4-4-2 formation. I don't like playing against these kind of formations. They've signed Deli Ali. They've got Cavani up top. Guedes, you know what? I might have to go back on my statement. Their team looks just as good as ours. Maybe there is no favourite between the two of us. It looks like it's going to be a 50-50 tie. Goncalo Guedes on the ball. Well done, Zakaria. Now we might be able to do something here. Havertz looks for Bailey. Now it's Jung Min Son. Good touch. Back to Leon Bailey. Should be a goal. Leon Bailey with the finish. An early lead against Valencia in the Champions League. In the knockout rounds, we are performing. Leon Bailey comes up clutch with the goal as we take the lead against the Spanish team. 1-0 up. Under 10 minutes as well. I think Jung Min Son picks up the assist for that. The dribble there to get past one and the awareness to find Leon Bailey again was just superb. And by the way, once again, I forgot to change Son's number. We're doing it after this game, 100%. And yeah, regardless, Leon Bailey puts us into the lead. We've got a big advantage now. Let's keep pushing. Havertz looks to feed Leon Bailey and he might be through here. Here goes Leon Bailey. Alaba is in catching Leon. He's having the game of his life already. Here goes for goal off the post. No way. Can you imagine if that would have gone in being 2-0 up under 20 minutes? Would have been incredible. But now Demirbe has an opportunity. Shoots with his right foot. I think Son blocked that one. Oh, here we go. Demirbe on the attack. Sees DRB. Big chance for DRB. A goes for goal. Left footed finish. But nah. How's he missing that? We've created so many good chances within a space of like 25 minutes or so. We've been ruthless so far. But in front of goal, we've got to be more clinical. Valencia look out of it and we've got to take advantage. Not a fan of this. Maxi Gomez on the ball. Still Maxi Gomez looks inside for Deli Ali, and well, all the hard work has just been undone. Deli Ali gets the equalizer for Valencia. Good goal. Can't really complain. It was a lovely finish as well. Ali does his classic celebration, which we don't get to see. 1 1. They get the away goal as well now, which is annoying. Carlos Soler on the attack and Valencia looking to build on that goal they just scored. They've got the confidence now. I'm not liking this. Condogbia looks outside for Guedes. Big chance for them. Yusuf Atal with one of the best defensive moments we're going to see all season. I thought there was surely going to be a goal and he saved us there. Valencia continue to build on the momentum. Chance for them on the corner. Condogbia looks for Cavani who shoots. We somehow survived that. It's getting a bit crazy now. This is the Champions League. Here goes Kai Havertz. We know he's quick. He's utilizing every bit of pace he's got here. Still Kai Havertz. Simple cut back to Son. Son on his left foot. Goes for goal and he's missed. No. I was ready to celebrate that goal, man. Hyungmin Son. So close to making it 2-1. Here's Edinson Cavani on the ball. Uh, this is not good for us. Too much space for them here. Deli Ali goes for goal. Off the crossbar. Wow. I thought we were going 2-1 down there, but... Somehow, the crossbar saved us. Oh, Yusuf Atal has made a fabulous run down this right side again. He could score here. He could actually score and he's done it. Twice in this episode now, he's made a beautiful run down the right flank. And he's come up clutch. Just before halftime, Atal steps up, signing him as being a tremendous piece of business. As he's now scored in the Champions League for us against Valencia to make it 2-1. What a finish from Atal. The pass is well. I'm not sure if you guys got to see that. From I think Aranguiz was just wonderful and Natal made complete use of it. The finish is well, perfect. We've made it 2-1 now. Come on. Another chance for us before the ref blows for halftime. Leon Bailey looks for Son. Son on the volley. Oh my god, what a goal from Bayer Leverkusen. Hyung Min Son has made it 3-1 before the halftime whistle. A volley like that. Oh, he made it look so easy right there. Let's go. We've made it 3-1. Such a big advantage as well now in this tie. I know they've got the away goal, but still, we've now got a two-goal cushion. Look at that for a finish from Son. This is what he offers you, man. I'm so glad we signed him. 90 million, well spent. 
3-1 now. Let's go. Halftime against Valencia and I did not expect this game to have so much action. Chances flying left, right and center for both teams. We're in the lead. We're doing well 3-1 but we can't count Valencia out. They've already hit the crossbar once. The second half is going to be even more interesting. I think it's the perfect time for us to make some changes. I want to bring on Sink Revin for DRB and I'll also give him the instruction to come back on defense to, you know, just short up our defense and avoid giving away more away goals. I also want some fresh legs. We'll bring on Palacios for Demirbe. And also let's bring on Isaac for Leon Bailey. Kondogbia. Good challenge right there from Ezekiel Palacios. Exactly why we've brought him on. We could do something here from this attack. Here goes Alexander Isaac. The Swedish international might be able to do something here. The dribbling is on point. Looks for the cutback for Arangiz. Big chance for him. No way has he missed that. How? Arangiz, you've got to be scoring those. Isaac did so well to create this chance. Here's Sinkreven on the attack here, making a good run. Still Sinkreven looks to play this one back in. Ah, they get it away. We might still have a chance. Here's Palacios. Still Palacios could go for goal from distance. Still Palacios shoots. Oh, he scored. Palacios, oh my days. That is the contender for goal of the season. On a big night like this, Champions League round of 16. Ezekiel Palacios has just done that. How is he beating the keeper from there? A cross goal as well. I thought long shots didn't work on FIFA 20. Unbelievable scenes. 4-1 now. What an advantage to take to Spain. Look at that for the finish. No chance for the keeper. Palacios. Wow. We've made it 4-1 now. This is hands down one of the best results we've had in this series. Beating Valencia 4-1 at home in the Champions League. Outrageous man. Genuinely insane. I think in the second leg, we've done enough to get the job done. And I think we should be in the quarterfinals. Let's go, man. Let's finally give Jungmin Son that number seven kit he deserves. I've completely forgotten about it multiple times. But now we've got it done. So he's going to be donning the number seven jersey. Let's also give Paulinho a jersey number that suits him. Maybe 17. That sounds good. Our next game is against relegation threat in Augsburg. We do simulate this one. We get ourselves a 4-1 win. But... An injury as well, which could slow down our progress. Son scores a brace, so does Havertz, but Bailey picks up an injury. Oh my god, Leon Bailey has suffered a medial collateral ligament injury. This is terrible news. He'll be out for the next three months. And if I'm not wrong, that's his season done. That is legit his season done. Let's take a look and see. Three months means he's not playing in March. He's not playing in April. He's not playing in May. Yep, that's his season done. That is so unfortunate. Leon Bailey has been such a key part to everything we've done this season. He's, I think, our top scorer. Yes, he is. And now he's injured. This, this is terrible news. Isaac and Son now have a huge responsibility on their shoulders. What an episode this has been, apart from, of course, the Leon Bailey injury. But in the Champions League, we stepped up. And next episode, we're going to get done with the round of 16. Hopefully, secure qualification for the quarterfinals. And not just that, we've got big games coming up against RB Leipzig in the Bundesliga as well. Borussia Mönchengladbach, so the drama continues even in the next episode. It's been a very good episode for our season objective. Sky Havertz was superb in this one. We kept a clean sheet in the Bundesliga. And not just that, a lot of assists with our left mids and right mids mean that we've completed the 3-4-3 challenge. And also, we're almost in the Champions League quarterfinals. So yeah. Things are going well. Before we wrap the episode up, time for you guys to make your vote count for the player of the episode. What is always a couple of nominees. We've got some different nominees for today. First one being Redeki. I thought he was just simply outrageously good in this episode. So he has to be nominated. Your second nominee is going to be Youssef Atal. New signing made in the January transfer window. And he's really announced himself in this one. Scored twice for us. Once in the Champions League. Once in the Bundesliga. Deserves to be nominated. Up to you guys to vote. Click the I button on the top right of your screen to vote for either of them. But with that, time to wrap up another episode of the Leverkusen series. Hopefully you're enjoying this one. Next episode, Champions League, Bundesliga games and all that sort of stuff. We signed Luka Modric as well in this one. So it was a pretty eventful episode. That's all I can say for now. But anyways, drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. And well, I'll catch you all next time.